And what's going on, everyone? Thanks for tuning back into the channel today. My name is Zach Davis, pastor of First Baptist Church in Mark Tree, Arkansas. Thanks for tuning in. Today, I want to talk about Paul's teaching, specifically in the synagogue. So we know Paul is the apostle to the Gentiles. And today we want to examine um, exactly what he taught. Now, obviously, not every single thing, but just an overview, because I think this has a huge impact on the way we read the Bible and hermeneutical principles and um, some of the things that go along with it. So before we get started, don't forget to like and subscribe down below. If you want to support us, you can support us on patreon.com slash Zach Davis. So let's get into it. This is a video that's a springboard for me from a thought that I heard from James White. James White stated he was reviewing a debate between Sam Frost and Don Preston, and James White stated, for some reason, Don Preston thinks we should view 1 Corinthians 15 in light of Hosea chapter 13. And I heard that and I thought, well, why would we not interpret it that way? Why would James White not think to go back to Hosea chapter 13 if the Apostle Paul used Hosea 13? So when we think about hermeneutical principles and concepts, the, the very first one that includes the context is that Scripture interprets Scripture. So one of the biggest differences in the way that I view the Scripture now as compared to, I don't know, say five years ago, or that I view the Scripture compared to maybe the way a lot of other folks view the Scripture, Christians, pastors included, is that when I see something that's in the Scripture, I, I want to know a couple of things. Number one, is this used in the Bible anywhere else? We call this the analogy of faith, Scripture interprets Scripture. If so, how is it used in these certain places? And when I compare how it's used over here to how it's being used here, is there a basis to use it under this circumstance in, in the New Testament? Say if I read something in the Old Testament, take, okay, take the sun, moon, and stars that are falling. So if the sun, moon, and stars are falling in a passage such as Isaiah chapter 13, when I get to the New Testament and I read that the sun, moon, and stars are falling, then in the mind of the Jewish audience who's read the Old Testament all their life, why would I use sun, moon, and stars in a different context in the New Testament than the Old Testament writer used it? So in Isaiah 13, you've got a proclamation against Babylon, a judgment that was coming on Babylon. It was called the day of the Lord, and the sun, moon, and stars would fall. Well, when I read about the sun, moon, and stars falling in the Olivet Discourse, then I have this basis. I mean, these are Jewish readers. This is their understanding. This is the way they talked. They don't talk like I do. Now, some thousands of years later, uh, they had a different uh, dialect, a, a, you know, different nuance to their language. And this brings about the question of how then do we read the New Testament? Should I read the New Testament with my 21st century mindset? Or should I read the New Testament the way that the original audience and the writers would have spoke and would have understood it? And we start to think about the ministry of the apostles and especially the apostle Paul. Then what we're going to begin to look at and see is that Paul clearly had things in mind. He wasn't making things up. He Paul didn't come up with something new. Everything Paul said, the Jews in that day could examine it and find the basis for it to see if what Paul was saying was correct or incorrect and then compare it with what was going on. So he wasn't going to be able to get away with anything new just because he had the ability to do some form of miracles or anything like that. All of that validated the fact that he was predicting the fulfillment of what was in the Old Testament. So very, very simply, what did Paul teach? Well, let's begin to take a look at that in today's lesson. The outline for Paul's mission, I think, is given in Romans 1.16 in part. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it's the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes. Now watch this next part. For the Jew first and also for the Greek. Now you ask the question, does God love the Jews more than he does the Gentiles? The answer is no, he's saving both through faith. But what we need to understand is the eternal hope and the eternal promises were given through the covenant people the Jews. So whenever Paul's going to go to a town, what we're going to find is the first place that he's going to visit is a synagogue. Now, why is he going to visit the synagogue before he goes to the Gentiles or to the Greeks in the area? And the reason is 
a couple reasons. Number one, I think he's putting the tribes back together. So there are people in the 12 tribes who are scattered abroad the known empire. James writes to them in James 1. Peter writes to the elect ex exiles of the dispersion in 1 Peter. There are Jews who are spread out all over. So Paul goes there, persuades them from the scriptures, which we'll talk about in a second, and begins to win those Jewish converts. If they should have, un if, if anyone was going to understand it, it was going to be the Jews. And then to go into the Gentiles and talk about how Christ Jesus is Lord, preaching the resurrection. So first place he goes, synagogue. Look at it in Acts chapter 17 when Paul goes to Thessalonica. It says this, they came to Thessalonica and were there was a synagogue of the Jews, where there was a synagogue of the Jews. Then Paul, as his custom was, went into them, and for three Sabbaths he reasoned with them from the what? From the Scriptures, explaining and demonstrating that the Christ had to suffer and to rise again from the dead, and saying, This Jesus whom I preach to you is the Christ. Some of them were persuaded and believed, is what it says after that. Now, I want to take a note here. Number one, he's in the sat in the synagogue on the Sabbath. Number two, he reasons with them from the scriptures. What did Paul preach whenever he went around? Well, what scriptures did they have? The Old Testament scriptures. When Paul was teaching in the New Testament, he was explaining to them from the Old Testament. So what did he explain from the Old Testament here? That Christ had to suffer and to rise again from the dead. This is an Old Testament concept that Paul's teaching the fulfillment of in the New Testament. He continues at Berea. Then when brethren, then the brethren immediately sent Paul and Silas away by night to Berea. When they arrived, they went into the synagogue of the Jews. Typical pattern. These were more fair-minded than those in Thessalonica. And I want to make a note on this right quick. And I don't mean this in any ugly or disparaging way at all, but I'm just going to tell you the truth about Christianity and especially in America and things that I'm seeing. When he says fair-minded right there, another translation for that is noble. These were more noble than those at Thessalonica, meaning these cats were fixing a study and they were going to search it out. Well, what did they study and what did they search out? In that they received the word with all readiness and searched the scriptures. What scriptures? If we're going to be Bereans, which everybody always wants to claim, we want to be Bereans, we want to be Bereans, you better have an understanding of the Old Testament because that's what they were studying. You cannot separate Old Testament doctrine and New Testament doctrine. Paul is teaching the New Testament doctrine found in in the Old Testament. This is why the Bereans could open up the pages of the Scripture, the Law and the Prophets, and go and see, okay, is this what Paul's teaching? Does this line up? They search the Scriptures daily to find out whether these things were so. Well, and they found out that it was true. Therefore, many of them believed, and also not a few of the Greeks, prominent women as well as men. And I would just ask the question, how well do we know the Old Testament? I mean, can we formulate the doctrines of the Bible from the Old Testament? Uh, can we teach the doctrine of salvation from the Old Testament? Can we teach the progression of the biblical story of the covenants from the Old Testament? What was Paul teaching? Well, he tells us in Acts 24. He's on trial. He says, this I confess to you, according to the way which they call a sect, the Christians. Isaiah 65, by the way, says he would call them by a new name. So I worship the God of my fathers. Old Testament reference. Paul was a Pharisee. Uh, everything in his lineage, he's worshiping the same God as them and the fulfillment of that. Believing all things which are written where? In the law and in the prophets. What did he teach? The Old Testament. He taught the law and the prophets. You can't separate what Paul taught from the Old Testament. I have hope in God which they themselves also accept that there will be, or mellow, about to be, a resurrection of the dead, both of the just and of the unjust. Okay, so right here Paul's saying, listen, I'm on trial for teaching the resurrection of the dead. Where did he find the resurrection of the dead at? He found it in the Old Testament. And I want to ask two questions of you. Two questions. Number one, when did the Old Testament say 
the resurrection of the dead was going to happen. Go read Daniel 12. Go read Isaiah 25 to 27. Go read Isaiah 65. The resurrection of the dead would happen at the judgment of the harlot city. Every single time. The resurrection of the dead, that concept is there. That concept is found in that specific timing, which is why Paul said there was about to be a resurrection. Number two, ask this question. Does the Old Testament teach a resurrection of physical bodies coming out of the ground? Does the Old Testament teach that? Let me segue that back to James White's comment on 1 Corinthians 15. James White said, for some reason, Don Preston thinks that 1 Corinthians 15 should be read in light of Hosea chapter 13. Hosea chapter 13 talks about Israel's resurrection. Hosea 13 talks about Israel dying and then continuing to sin. Now, let me ask a question. If that's physical death, how do people who are physically dead continue to sin? They don't. This is talking about a spiritual death of separation. They had the law. They sinned against it. They're spiritually dead. They were separated from the presence of God. Also, in 1 Corinthians 15, Paul quotes Isaiah 25 in verse 8, talking about bringing an end to death in Hades. If you go read Isaiah 24 to 27, which happens at the time of the destruction of the holy city, is this speaking of a physical death? Absolutely not. This is a spiritual death and a spiritual resurrection. Whatever Paul was teaching has to be consistent with the Old Testament. You don't have the right to say, well, Paul in 1 Corinthians 15 is teaching a physical resurrection in our future when the passages that he quoted from the Old Testament, he confirmed it here in Acts 24 and 26, that he taught no other things than that which the prophets and Moses said would come. You can't make the New Testament mean something other than what the Old Testament said. You cannot do it. If you compare Scripture with Scripture, the Old Testament with the New Testament, whatever Paul said fits the context. The only way you can say Paul's teaching a physical future resurrection in 1 Corinthians 15 or Acts 24 or anywhere else in the New Testament is to say that's what the Old Testament taught. The Old Testament never once taught that. The Old Testament pointed to a specific time. It pointed to a specific reality. So, Think about that with other doctrines of the Bible. Whatever is taught in the New Testament has to have its basis in the Old Testament. Let me use one for example. Let me use the rapture. Okay, people will say 1 Thessalonians 4, the Apostle Paul, and 1 Corinthians 15 speak of a physical rapture where physical bodies are beamed up off the planet. Now, what did Paul teach? Nothing other than those things which the prophets and Moses said would come. So if I'm going to find, if Paul's teaching physical bodies beamed up off of the planet, I have to find that in the Old Testament. Well, what verse in the Old Testament teaches that? None. Absolutely none. See the problem? No verses in the Old Testament taught that. If the Old Testament doesn't teach it, then Paul's not teaching it in the New Testament. Therefore, I've got to read those passages in light of what Paul quoted. Guys, when Paul quotes from the Old Testament, we should tell him, thank you. And then we should go back and examine the context of the Old Testament text and the Old Testament promise. You can't make them contradict. It does not work. You're going to come up with doctrines that are unbiblical, and you're going to rip them out of the covenantal context to which Paul was preaching. Paul was preaching the hope of Israel. Paul's Old Testament usage goes something like this. Over 60 quotations or allusions in the book of Romans alone. It's everywhere. It's in every chapter almost. Paul quotes the Torah, the first five books of the Bible, some 45 times. Paul quotes the prophets some 53 times. From the Law and the Prophets, 45 times and 53 times. He quotes from the book of Isaiah, which was his favorite prophet, 36 times. Why did he quote from Isaiah so much? I think it's because Isaiah talked about the meshing together of the Jew and the Gentile in the New Covenant. Paul quotes from the Psalms 23 times. He quoted from the Psalms when he wanted to talk about Christ as the Messiah, his kingship, uh, forgiveness, things of that nature. Paul quotes the Law and the Prophets all together 
some 131 times. Friends, do not get to the New Testament and think that you're going to teach something different in the New Testament than what was found in the Old Testament. And there's an epic failure in mind in your culture to understand the Old Testament. This isn't about eschatology. This is about hermeneutics. How do we interpret the Scripture? We better interpret it with the same lens that the apostles, and specifically the Apostle Paul did in the New Testament, or we're going to get it wrong. I pray you'd consider that and think about it. I think this would cure up a lot of confusion today in the church. God bless you. Like and subscribe, and we'll see you soon.